Hi, good morning. How are you? How's it going? Very well, Susan. Good, good. So tell me what's been happening at Helen's Manor over the last, I keep wanting to say a few weeks, but it's actually a couple it's of months. It's been a long now, time. It? it certainly has, yes. Well, it's, it's kind of hard to talk about, actually, because um, we have been having quite a wonderful time. It's such a fantastic opportunity to have an empty diary, especially when there's hundreds of projects that you've never managed to get around to. And we have um, a certain amount of financial security. We're a charity. We have a trust that supports our charitable work. Um, so we have actually been able to just take a step back to really use the opportunity to um, get things done that we never find time for, to actually really address um, what we want to do um, and how things are probably going to change. So we've been very lucky in that respect. So you've been using the time very positively and constructively to reassess and review things. Yeah, and that hasn't been easy because some of our key team are furloughed. Um, so we've kind of got to a stage where when, if we actually need to move forward with some of these big decisions that we've made, then we want to do that when we've got the full team back. And that's a difficult thing to know when they're going to be back. Um, but we've we've been thinking about the whole picture in a very different way. We're a slightly different organisation in that we are a uh, charity. We're supported by a trust for our particular charitable remit, which is about educational and cultural events. And we have some trade business alongside which supports um, our charitable work. So we've had to really think hard about what our priorities need to be if we are working on a more reduced stuff. And it needs to be our charitable work. Um, so massive questions about how uh, we want to move forward with events like weddings, corporate events, parties, the other things that we do. Um, so have you needed to cancel or postpone events that you already had in the, in the diary? Yeah, so everything's been cancelled. We do about 10 weddings a year, um, all in the summer months. They've all been cancelled. They initially rebooked into sort of September, October, but since then they've cancelled all those. They've moved into next year. And actually we found a lot of them have moved into weekdays, partly because they can't get their suppliers uh, on those Saturdays. Um, which is good for us, which means we're probably not going to lose um, next year's uh, sort of wedding business. We're not having to try and squeeze everybody in. Um, but it very much changes the way we are. And actually, we have to be very careful to avoid um, filling up too much of our diary with commercial events because we have to make some of our charitable events a priority as well. Sure. So tell me more about the charitable events that you, you, that you run. So um, music is a, a big focus. So we have a classical music festival in May, um, a week of students coming here, um, having masterclasses and public concerts. We have a garden festival that would have taken place this weekend. We've postponed it until end of August and we very much hope to be able to put something on then. Um, we'll see. Uh, we have a poetry festival in July. So it fills up a lot of our summer months. The space that we then have available, we use for um, corporate events, weddings, parties. Um, and we tend to try and keep the winter clear because there's a huge amount of conservation and restoration work that needs to go on in our Tudor Manor House and with our huge collection of paintings. So that's when the the staff really focus on looking after the collection in the house. Sure. Um, so your poetry festival in July, is that happening or is that, is that also been postponed? That's the Ledbury Poetry Festival and uh, we host um, poet, poets here and we host events here. That's um, not been postponed, it's happening, but it's happening in purely digital form. Okay, oh great. So um, people will still be able to be involved, just not in, in person. Absolutely. And likewise, the music festival, we had a number of sort of homespun concerts, our musicians performing from their own homes, which was really well received. And the garden festival this weekend are putting out a whole digital programme with workshops and films and talks 
So yeah, we've had to really, really step up to the plate in terms of our use of technology, which to be honest, we weren't really sort of fully up and running with. And we've had massive support from Herefordshire Council who've given us a big grant to um, get some of the equipment we need for sort of proper conferencing facilities and things. So yeah, that's been really useful. It's been a, a big learning curve for us, but absolutely essential. And it's going to really set us up well in the future. And so do you think you'll take that use of technology further and do more with it in the future, perhaps? Yeah, we have an outdoor learning programme here for um, young people, often vulnerable people, um, which involves them coming here, spending nights in the woods, building their own shelters, cooking their own food on the fire, learning some survival skills. Um, and the plan is to develop a whole um, online programme which can actually get them as close to nature as possible, even when it's not possible to actually um, bring them here. So. There's a whole new way of thinking that's been a massive challenge for everyone, I'm sure. Particularly that's amazing. For us. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're kind of homegrown, organic here. We've not, we're not, our kind of foray into corporate events is very new, as you, as you know. We've done weddings for about 10 years and these kind of cultural events. Um, so having to kind of step up a gear in terms of our, um, connectiveness and uh, sort of um, yeah just IT technology digital presence um, that's really just been in the last couple of years that we've been pushing on that which you know when and if you go back into kind of looking at that corporate event side of things um, will stand you in good stead because obviously corporates will be looking for good Wi-Fi and so on. So it's great that this time has enabled you to kind of, again, as you say, focus and look at the projects that perhaps you didn't have time to, to focus on before. Yeah. And we're kind of small scale. The space that I'm in now is our converted Georgian stable block, um, which sleeps 16. And it's used for, mostly used for sort of retreats and weekend courses or family gatherings at the moment but would work well for small corporate events. Um, and it's kind of basic, but it's the kind of space where you come and you know that your focus is on something else. It's not on luxury, it's not on, um, uh, it, it's not about the bedroom that you're in or the facilities that you've got in the bedroom, it's about what you can do in this space. And it's an inspirational space. Our gardens are absolutely stunning. And there's this incredible peacefulness here that actually people find is really nurturing and really inspirational. So. And I believe you opened the gardens for the first time um, over the course of the weekend. Yeah. So we opened as the restrictions were lifted and gardens were allowed to be opened. Um, we put a message out on our Facebook, which went completely crazy and we got really nervous about too many people turning up. We're not running a booking system. It's um, walk-ups only. Um, and then actually I was quite relieved when it just poured with rain on Wednesday and it's kind <laughs> of slowed, slowed the thing down. We're open again today and there's already a few people coming. Um, so it's, it's gentle. They're, it's gentle steps towards a very different new future. Sure. Um, but we've always just thrived on on real personal service, real personal contact. So one of the things we've really struggled with over this time is actually finding the the motivation to manage events that might not have that kind of personal contact that we've always loved. Um, and there are so many ifs and buts and speculations that you can put so much energy into. It's, it's quite tiring working out all those different scenarios um, that we're quite inclined now to take a step back and just wait until we've got clearer parameters. Partly because we're not inspired by having to run an event where we have to take our guests temperature when they arrive, wipe down tables every 20 minutes, have um, wear PPE, um, so being, having the luxury, having the support of our trust to be able to just take these gentle steps and see where we feel really inspired to start working towards something is fantastic. Yes. And, and that's great that you're, you're in that position because I'm sure 
the sentiment that you've just expressed is shared by a lot of people across hospitality and events. Um, but then because of the commercial operation side of things, they, they need to look at kind of how to operate within the current scenario when they are able to do so. Obviously, events and when they can happen is really not on the radar and the focus at the moment is more on bars and restaurants. But um, yeah, I know um, lots of people across the industry share, share that sentiment. and you know, what is hospitality about? So yeah. it's, it's nice that you can kind of take steady steps um, as you see how things unfold in a more general point of view. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, it's been lovely to talk to you. Thank you so much. And um, I wish you well. I'm, it looks like we're going to have quite nice weather this weekend. So I'm sure lots of people will come and visit the gardens because they are beautiful and they're just such a lovely calming environment in which to be so I, I i can quite understand why people were very excited when you made the announcement on social media yeah yes well thank you it's been good talking to you i really value um the support that we're getting from secret spaces and and just this uh sharing of experiences i found really beneficial as well thank you